To assess the ulnar collateral ligament of the thumb, we would strongly advise that you use a gel bottle or a towel and ask the patient to just rest their thumb into some flexion. That will be really useful later on when we're doing the dynamic tests. So what we can see here is the metacarpal and the metacarpal has got this concavity here and that's a nice little bony landmark to look for and then you can see the phalanx and the joint there. Now this structure here that you can see, this nice fibula structure, is the ulnar collateral ligament and this is what we need to assess for. Now we can assess it in two ways dynamically. The first way is just like when you do a knee valgus and just we're just going to add a little bit of valgus to the joint. Now you can see the joint open and close um, and that's really important to assess to see if there's any laxity in the joint but do appreciate how subtle I am with the movement. We really don't need to pull that hard. And that will give us some information about the laxity of the joint. Now, we also need to look for something called a Steiner lesion. Now, to assess that, what we need to do is we just need to find the adductor aponeurosis that will sit just as a very thin band over the top. And when we ask the patient to flex their IP joint, you can see that it actually moves from left to right. And what that shows us is that it's moving separately from the ulnar collateral ligament. And what you find with a Steiner lesion, essentially you get a full thickness tear of the ligament, and then the adductor aponeurosis actually buckles up and will end up in the middle of the tear. And if that happens, that means you're gonna end up with long-term laxity within that joint and some instability, unless it is reviewed surgically. So it's definitely something we don't want to miss. So you just ask your patient to flex the thumb and you can see very nicely that structure moving separately from the ulnar collateral ligament.